The true meaning of sustainable is you can keep doing it and you can keep doing it more and more and more and you're still having no harm on anything, you know? That's sustainable. Feeding the world's ever-increasing population is a growing challenge, pushing the limits of what the planet can sustain. By 2050, the demand for food will be 70 to 100% higher, and new sustainable ways are needed to supply the world's population. I'm in Devon to meet a family of mussel farmers who believe they have part of the answer. Brixham is one of the UK's largest fishing ports and home to innovative family company, Offshore Shellfish. Harbours are very busy places. They are. <laughs> yes. There's kind of every activity imaginable happening around us at the moment. Company founders John and Nikki Homeyard have been growing mussels for over 30 years. Nikki, tell me, what is offshore shellfish? Offshore shellfish is uh, John's dream, basically. Uh, he had a dream when he was uh, 17 and was interested in mussels, went to university, studied mussels, and then really wanted to do something with them. So this boat is the Holly May that's coming in. Good morning. Back in 1988, I think it was, I saw an article in a magazine of some people who were trying to do it in Scotland and went up to see what they were doing. Thought, well, I could do this. Culture mussel farms cultivate mussels on long lines of rope suspended underwater. He got involved in that project. Uh, he became one of the pioneers of the industry and he worked with other mussel farmers and equipment manufacturers to develop the Scottish industry. Using no land, fresh water or pesticides, this process is recommended as a super green option in the Marine Conservation Society's UK Good Fish Guide. But then as he grew and we became the largest company in Scotland, it wasn't enough for John. Thank you. He wanted to get bigger, to get better, to feed more people, and to really look more into the environmental side of things. This is Adam. This is Hi, Adam. Good morning. He's our skipper for the day, so okay. what he says goes. Right. Uh, <laughs> understood. We're just leaving Tor Bay, and over there, that's Torquay. We live and breathe it 24 hours a day, but two of our children are involved. They all three grew up working on the Scottish Mussel Farm and now two of them still work for us, which is lovely to have it as a family business. And Sarah was two, I think, when we started it. Five, sorry. You're older than I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it about this particular area off the coast of Devon that made this ideal? It's got the right temperature range. The temperature of the water uh, governs how fast the mussels grow. Where we are in Lime Bay here, we're around about the boundary of where the water coming down the English Channel meets the water coming up from the Atlantic. And where you get that zone of mixing, you often get very good growth of plankton there. The plankton is actually vital for us because that's what the mussels feed on, the single-celled algae that the whole marine food chain is based on. Yeah. And the mussels are only just, just up from the bottom, if you see what I mean. Right. So they're the grazers of the sea. As we arrive at the six square kilometre farm, John is keen to check on the progress of last year's limes, now becoming ready to harvest. They'll throw a hook out, catch hold of the head rope, and then winch it up to the surface, and then it gets put on these wheels. So these are full grown mussels. They've got a covering of this year's spat on them as well, which is a bit of a nuisance. That's impressive. I'm going to go down and take some of these. These guys are putting floats on as well, so make sure you don't get crushed. Keep it up, I want to get a sample. Adult mussels spawn by releasing sperm and eggs into the water column, which are then externally fertilized, a common occurrence in marine species. There are three larval stages, trochophore, veliger, and plantigrade, which begins shell secretion and the growth of what becomes the bissel thread that attaches it to any suitable surface. John's specially designed float suspend the ropes near to the surface of the water. This helps the mussels to hold on, reacting to the movement of the waves to create more bysus. Well, these are the mussels as they come straight off the lines. You can see some clumps of hairy stuff here. Well, this is the bysus or the byssus, which are the threads that they uh, attach themselves to the ropes. Well, you've seen it on the shore, you know, if you go and pick mussels off a rocky shore where the waves are pounding, you can already pull them off. Yes, yes. 
like that's a reaction to the They just cling on tighter when there's movement. Yeah. Muscles like this are produced using an almost entirely natural process. What's in store for us today, John? We're collecting seed from the, um, uh, the spat collectors, and then we're going to put the seed back onto the ropes at a lower density. During the spring, John and his team put out custom-made rope to collect the mussel larvae. This makes it easier for the mussels to attach to, and there's lots of surface area, so you can get more mussels on there, and they've got yeah. things to cling to. The microscopic larvae floating in the water attach themselves to the rope using their byssus threads. The species of mussels we farm is the native Mytilus edulis, or the blue mussel, and I knew there was beds of wild mussels around here, so if there's wild mussels around, you're almost certain you need to be able to collect enough spat. It's not absolutely certain. The first year we put ropes down, it was a big blue fingers crossed exercise to see that we would actually get spat, and we did. They're really beautiful, aren't they? The shells yeah, are gorgeous. Are. I mean, they come up with all sorts of patterns. This one's, oh, that one's like got round bits on it. But oh yeah, wow. Others are all very stripy and almost look like they've got tartan on them. Exactly. And these are what you call? These are spats. spats. Well, yeah, yeah so this, the spat is tiny and these are young mussels, I guess. And even when they're tiny, they are actually perfectly formed in shape. They're absolutely recognizable as a muscle. Look at that Yeah, one. they're absolutely it's perfect. Beauty. Yeah, mussels are, are filter feeders, so we don't add anything to them whatsoever. We put the lines in the water and all their food they take from the ocean, so from the algae and from the, the microplankton. And because the lines are so spread out, there's a lot of flow through of nutrients here. Mussels are a part of the bivalve mollusk family, which feed by filtering water, removing organic matter, and thereby cleaning coastal waters. If I'll open one up now so you can see, the two parts of the mantle join together to form two lips that just meet in the middle, so they suck in one and blow out the other. Along with other shellfish like oysters, clams and scallops, they're described as the intestines of coastal ecosystems. They grow in huge numbers if you give them the right environment to, as you can see today. Um, whereas oysters and scallops, they have to have a lot more care taken of them, so there'd be more manual labour involved. And yeah, and a lot of these would really just end up sort of amounting to nothing if, the, if it was their natural life cycle. They'd float through or they wouldn't attach or they'd get yeah. eaten. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's a lot more mussels that are able to grow as a result of having the ropes in the water. Yeah, absolutely. They're fulfilling their... <laughs> They're fulfilling their destiny. Their destiny. <laughs> it's not only mussels that have been finding a home on the ropes. So yeah, these are some of the species which the farm is giving a, a home to. So we've got the queen scallops here the baby edible brown crabs. So they'll grow up to be like the big sized ones that you see on a plate. And by the time we harvest the ropes, we grow up and get them that size and they spend all their life on the ropes. Wow. Just eating our mussels. That's actually a king scallop. That's an important fishery in these parts. Um... I'm going to put these back in the water. So John, could you tell us what stage we're at now in the process of today's outing? Uh, well, we've finished collecting seed. That's what you can see in the big one ton bags here. That's enough for us to get through for this afternoon. We're now going to go on and put this seed back on the ropes. It's what we call re-socking or re-tubing. So this is our chart plotter. So we've just finished harvesting the spat and now we need to move down this column to go and put the spat back out, okay. which you can probably see just out in the far distance. Right. There's a load of little floats. Yep, yep. It's in amongst that lot. So you don't put it back in the same place that you just took it out? No. So these are designated areas for the spat, but the rest of the farm's full of lines ready for the spat to go back out onto and then they'll be harvested in about a year's time. The line goes through the tube there and the, with the mussels and a big cotton stocking, sock, and so that will hold them on. It's very fine and it will just hold them on long enough for them to create their biceps again and cling themselves back on. And do you get to retrieve these socks afterwards? No, this these is such fine time. cotton, it's biodegradable, so it just disintegrates. Yeah. Been going for a short while. Stop. We take off a section and count it. Count the muscles in it. During restocking, measured sections are counted to make sure the spat density is in line with the water conditions. Getting these numbers right is crucial for healthy growth. Two seven five. We need to go up a bit. Yeah. It's the sort of science that just comes from having done it a lot, a lot of times. Yeah. 
having them at the right density means that there'll be less fouling, there'll be better growth rates and there'll be better yield because yeah. um, you know they'll have higher meat contents because they've got access to nutrients and things. It's clever. It's very clever. It's simple. But yeah, it's it, looks, it looks, it looks, things look easy but there's a lot of planning behind, yeah, uh, no, <laughs> behind down, these down to make to the, it simple. Down to how many muscles per square foot. Or? Exactly, yeah. I mean these should be fine now until this time next year and all we've got to do is keep adding floats as they get heavier and heavier and lower in the water. So Sarah, why are you such a fan of mussels? What's so good about them? Well, in terms of eating, they, you can't really eat anything much healthier. And, and the shells are made of carbon, so that carbon comes from the atmosphere and is absorbed. Yeah. And then that's never released again, so they act as a carbon sink. Which is, I think, is a, a little known fact about mussels, don't it you? It is, yeah, not many people realise that. They're a superfood in terms of eating and also in terms of environment. Mussels capture and trap carbon as their shells grow through a process known as biomineralization. Not only is this great for marine ecosystems, but when compared to other sources of protein, their carbon footprint doesn't get any better. You know, you can grow trees or seaweed or whatever else you want that takes carbon out of the atmosphere, but it releases it pretty quickly. With mussel shells or any other bivalve shell, it's millions of years, you know, so we're, we're taking it out of circulation. You can see the the lines we're working on here at the moment are basically grouped into a column going from north to south, and there's 61 of those. Yeah. Um, and there's five columns going across the farms. The firm currently has 240 lines in the water and permission to expand to 800 lines covering 15 square kilometers, which will then produce 10,000 tonnes of high quality protein every year. I mean, I'm proud of what we've achieved here and it's, uh, yeah. it's taken some doing. And people thought it wouldn't be possible. He developed our own system but took the best bits from around the world. So we're the only ones in the world that use these ropes for this system, of this method of farming offshore. Today we're going out to do uh, the first harvest of this end of the season. We're going to be lifting up one of our lines of mussels that are just over a year old. Uh, well, we've got an order for 15 tonnes to be sent to Holland and the maximum we'll do on this boat is 40 tonnes. With a finite harvest window and limited weather-reliant work days, the pressure is on to make sure this first day's harvest is a success. The restriction for what we do is the number of days at sea. Okay. Because you can't go out here when it's really rough. No. Uh, you just tear everything apart. So we've got to get as much work done in any decent day of weather as we yeah, possibly can. John gets his first look to see how these mussels have grown over the past year. Uh, they go through a machine which takes them off the rope and uh, through another machine which declumps them because they're all stuck together when they come off the ropes. Another machine which washes them, sorts them into size and delivers them down into these bags. There are many variables to John's ever-evolving practice to produce the perfect, healthy and attractive mussels. Hey, that is a whopper. That is beautiful. A big muscle. Gorgeous colours as well. Yeah. That's the scar it had when we put it back in the water around about this time last year. That was probably a scar it got from being bashed against another one during a winter storm or something. But since then it's grown pretty much straight through. It's just like a tree. Yeah, yeah. When they're growing fast, the rings are further apart. Do you want to cook them up now or do you want to wait until we get in shore? So I'll, I'll get them out in a second. I'm quite hungry actually. You can't get fresher than this. It's literally just come out of the ocean. Mussels are now considered one of the ultimate superfoods, being high in protein, low in calories, and rich in vitamins and minerals. Right, that liquid is virtually all straight out of the mussels. Fantastic stock. Yet if this is to have a significant impact on how we produce and consume protein, more people need to be eating them and cooking them at home. Different. So good. It's something that they might eat when they're on holiday or if they're in a restaurant because they don't have to cook it and it's ready for them. And really, we've just cooked with you. You've seen how quick and simple it really yeah. is. There is nothing quicker and simpler, in my opinion, to cook, certainly from the sea. In the theme of sustainability and growing world population and needing to kind of have sustainable solutions to how we feed a growing population, do you think rope cultured mussel farming could be one of those answers? Well, if you look at the productivity here, we can produce an awful lot of high quality protein. This is high quality seafood with no inputs. 
ultimately when we got all the gear in the water, we should be able to produce uh, more than 10,000 tonnes a year. The total landings in Brixham of fish and other shellfish is somewhere between 10 and 20,000 tonnes each year. So if we can land 10,000 tonnes, it's making a big, big difference. As far as the biology is concerned, I mean, I think we're benefiting the fishing indirectly because of all the, the food that gets released from the farm, whether it be little shrimps or worms or things like that. The fish that come into the farm, eventually they'll leave a little bit fatter than when they came in. Researchers from Plymouth University are monitoring the impacts of the farm on the marine ecosystem. The last survey showed 56 different species living on and around the ropes. It's also acting as its own nature reserve. Before we arrived, the seabed was basically fished out and scoured. We have that from studies that we took before we started. The seabeds become more populated. There are lobsters, there are crabs, there are many, many different creatures that live there. So it has become its own little marine protected area. So it would be incorrect, I think, to use the word monoculture. Yeah, anything but, yes. I mean, it's an enormously diverse um, ecosystem here. Uh, I'm not pretending it's natural, it's not, but then there's very few ecosystems anywhere in this country that you can call natural. We've been using this country for an awful long time, you know. On our way home, John and Sarah mentioned the exciting news that they've been nominated for Best Aquaculture Company at the UK Aquaculture Awards, and the ceremony is taking place online today. It's the whole world. That's fantastic to be a finalist. Oh, a satisfying end to the day. Satisfying seeing the bags go up. More than that, satisfying looking at what's in them. Yeah, we've grown some good stock this year. But I think we've got the basics of what we do pretty well sorted out. So we're confident enough to go and build the next stage soon. Just as today's harvest is leaving the boat, John receives an exciting call. All right. Yeah, all right, I'll go and tell them all. Yeah, Adam. Greg, come here, and Lee, and you. Today was the UK Aquaculture Awards. This company was nominated for the best aquaculture company in the country, and it won that. Oh, fantastic. So, that was sponsored yeah, by the Crown Estate. Two bacon on Monday, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's only taken 32 years. <laughs> it's amazing how lucky you get after 32 years. One of the most satisfying things about what we do is seeing when a truckload of mussels goes off, that is 30 or 40,000 meals in one truck. And I can do that sort of every day when we're harvesting. There's an awful lot of stuff called sustainable merely because they've passed a certificate or something you can write sustainable on your stuff. The true meaning of sustainable is you can keep doing it and you can keep doing it more and more and more and you're still having no harm on anything, you know? That's sustainable. It's finished. But don't worry, we've got a lot more Razor stories for you. All you need to do is like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.